Doc, can you um, can you can you agree that there will be a little bit of a circus atmosphere surrounding these next two games between these two teams, with of course Kobe being the focus? Well, Kobe should be the focus. Um, you know, I don't know about the circus or not, but I got a feeling that uh, they probably are used to it this year. But it's a good circus, you know. Um, it's like I said yesterday. I just think it's, listen, you know, it's nice that he's going out his way, you know, and he deserves it. Um, I don't think a lot of people um, get to. Uh, most bad players never get to. Uh, they're told to go home. Uh, you know, most great players, you know, may stay around way too long. Uh, most boxing champions get knocked out, and they, they're told to go home. So. It's nice that, uh, you know, Kobe gets to go out on his accord, uh, and I think that's really cool. Uh, uh, Doc, just a couple of quick ones. Uh, how, did, how was Blake feeling after practice yesterday? He felt great. You know, we didn't, I mean, it, uh, that wasn't much of a practice, so it, there was no, there were literally there was no chance for him to get sore in yesterday's practice. Uh, having said that, he felt really good after the game, and he felt good yesterday and he feels good today. So that's a good sign. I think we'll know more, uh, you know, probably after this game, uh, to be honest. And how's Paul Pierce doing? He's doing good. Uh, he'll, he probably won't play today, but he'll probably play tomorrow. Doc, to your left, is there a degree of melancholy, maybe even sadness, because Kobe, who's so used to contending uh, for championships, is now on a team that's won 16 games and lost 60 in his last season? Oh, no sadness my way. Uh, <laughs> you know, let me be clear. I, clear. I love Kobe. Uh, but I'd never cheer for him to win. You know, I was always the opponent and have been an opponent throughout his career. I never get that skewed, you know. Uh, so I have no sadness towards that. Uh, you know, it would be nice if he was in the playoffs and, and competing as long as we could still win. Uh, but it would be nice for him, you know, because he is, he's been such a champion. And, you know, really the only thing that uh, is strange is he's just been so competitive. Uh, you know, as a person. And so that's the only thing that to me, you, you know, you don't get sad over it, but you just wish for him he could be that and it made a difference because um, I think that's what sets him apart. You know, he's as talented as any player that's ever played the game. But I think what, and I've said this throughout, what people have missed is how competitive he is. Uh, that's what's made him great. You know, there's probably other players that have the talent, but very few. Uh, you can probably, three that I know of, I can't even name those, you know, Michael, uh, Kevin Garnett, I'm just talking about as far as just straight up competitiveness, and Kobe probably are the three that come to mind. Isaiah should be in that group, you know. Um, you know, those guys, they're more great players, but I'm talking about straight competitiveness. I don't know if those four, to me, are probably in a category of their own. Uh, looks like there's probably two potential first round playoff matchups for you guys. I think most people would say one team, because of injuries, it w would be preferable to the other. Do you, do you have a, a rooting interest as far as matchup at this point? Is no, at that? I think they both will be hard no matter what. I think the playoffs are hard. You know, I always laugh when people say this one will be easy. It's, <laughs> it's, it's ridiculous. You know, so I always look at it that um, you know both teams kind of create their own problem. Uh, but I don't, you know, I tend to focus on us and letting us be ready. You guys could have a small say in that because you play one of the teams and can yeah. actually rest guys. Would that be something you would? No, I may rest guys or not, but that won't be the reason we do it, you know. Um, I'm sure some will take it that way if we did, but that won't be the reason. Doc, I wore this t-shirt for you, bursting through the gateless gates. That's been one of your mantras. Is the squad on the cusp? A bursting to the gateless gates, just a few games left for the playoffs? I, I hope so. Mm -hmm. uh, I like the shirt. I appreciate the effort, uh, number one. Um, yeah, I mean, listen, um, I like where we're at. Uh, I really do. Um, I think we've had an amazing year with all this stuff, you know, and um, we're coming into the playoffs, I think, in a great place mentally uh, and hopefully physically. And if we are right physically, um, I think we're going to be really good. Talk over. Um, will Blake play back to backs? I doubt it, but I don't know yet. You know, um, it's a tough call, um, but I doubt it. And just tonight, are you looking for more from him in certain areas, or what was the best of what you saw that came out of what you saw the other day, and what was lacking? 
Well, his timing is off, obviously, and um, you know, so I'm not looking I want much more tonight. Honestly, he still didn't have. He's only had one practice in one game, so um, you know, I don't count yesterday again as a practice. So I don't know how much more you'll see. Uh, his minutes will be around that same between 20 and 25, no matter how the game is going. Um, but I just think each game is good for him, and that's that's all I care about right now. Doc, over here. <clears throat> you said uh, previously, yeah, I know. Uh, you said previously that you might have to alter your practice schedule. Right. Uh, <clears throat> we won't. more time. I was going to say, was that a difficult decision for you, or? Uh, well, yeah, but we're we're not going to. I just it's just not enough days, so. You know, listen, it is what it is. So we just, we figure uh, we'll get our practice days after the last game. And, you know, it'll be two or three, you know, maybe. And that's it. Uh, because you still have to factor in the rest with all the other guys. So it's just one of those things. So more so than even an opponent, are you rooting for a Sunday start? I would like that. So if you have any say so with I the league, done. if you can call that, would be nice. <laughs> but, uh, you know, that means we'll start Saturday afternoon at 12, you know, so but, you know, that's how it usually works. Hey, Doc, Doc, what uh, moments jumped out to you when Kobe and Pierce go against each other? Well, it's some good moments. Um, you know, Paul in the wheelchair. This one moment coming back as the hero. That was terrific. Uh, you know, game uh, six was was uh, terrific. Uh, that's a moment that I remember in 2008. You know, the funniest moment, Kobe knows, the funniest moment of that thing, though. I mean, we were up by 1,000 in game six. And uh, and the, um, the guy who you least would expect walks over to me during the game, Tom Thibodeau and asked me, he said, um, are you going to sub out? You know, it's six minutes left. We're up 42 points. Are you, you're going to sub. Of all the guys to say that, it was Tom Thibodeau. And I looked over there on the Lakers floor, on the floor, and Kobe was still on the floor. And I actually said, when Phil takes that guy out, I take my guys out. And Tim says, you're safe. And I said, not with that guy on the floor. So, uh, we, you know, I was dead serious. I mean, I had obviously lost my mind. It was 42-point lead. But he put that fear in you, man. He, he can run off threes. I mean, obviously, I wasn't that good in math, so I was, I was worried about him. And uh, finally, Phil took him out so I could sub. Are you it still good. the mind that if Kendrick didn't get hurt, yeah, the result would have been different? Well, I don't know. I don't want to take that away from them. You know, they want it. Uh, and part of winning it uh, is health. So I would have liked our chances, obviously, and I'm sure they would have liked theirs. But um, you know, you got to give them that. They they want it, so you got to give it to them. It take me two or three years to figure. Finally, actually say that, and it's very hurtful. Uh, but you have to give them the credit. They won the title. Doc, uh, going back to Paul Pierce for a second. When he's healthy, what role would you like to see him fill for you guys in the playoffs, and how important is he? Uh, making big shots. You know. Um, playing heady, smart basketball. Um, you know, I think he, at the four, has been really good for us at times, especially rebounding and putting his body in the right spot and just being a leader, you know. Uh, it's tough to do all that when you're not healthy, obviously, but that's the role we hope for. Dr. To your, to your right, there's certain organizations you know, the Lakers have over the course of time, the Spurs certainly have, but there's like an institutional knowledge that goes with some of the success. And, you know, Kobe's leaving, they're losing Gary Beattie. How hard is it to create that, and then when you lose it, what what do you do? Well, I joined an organization that had lost it, you know, so I saw it firsthand with the Celtics. You know, the Celtics have had that, and, you know, they went in that long tailspin of losing. Uh, and I thought the first thing, you know, bringing Danny back, who was involved with all the winning, was their first their, a very smart move uh, by them. And, uh, you know, obviously it took a while, but... What I, what I found with, with, with them and us at that time was once we started getting it right again, it was very easy to fall back into who we were in the past uh, because you had practice at it. You, 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 know, uh, you had guys who had had experience that could tell you, well, when we did this, we did this. You know. um, well, with a lot of organizations, even ours, you know, the more we win, it's still new to everybody. You don't, can't fall back on, well, you know, what. Uh, Keith Kloss did 
10 years ago, 20 years ago. I don't even know why I said that, but, uh, you know, but my point, you know, what my point is, you know, you don't have a lot to fall back on, you know, and so I think it's, uh, it's different in that way. Last question. Excuse me. Kobe said repeatedly that that 2010 championship was by far the most important to Yeah, I'm sure it was. When you, when you think about him in 08 and then 2010, how did you see him different? Well, I thought the OAE taught them a lesson. You know, I've heard Kobe say that, um, you know, inside view from us. When, I don't know what game it was. I want to say game four. I want to say, I think it's game four when they, I remember them saying that uh, they had to be physical like the Celtics. And I remember right when I heard that, I was like, well, we have them. Uh, because if they're going to try to be us, they can't be us. Uh, and that gave me a ton of confidence when I heard their talk like that. Um, and I thought that summer they came back like that for the year. You know, they had they played tougher, they were more physical, uh, and so I th I saw that. I just saw the drive and the understanding of uh, how to win that title that way. And I thought in 2010 you could see the difference. Uh, they're far. They're a different team. You know, we wasn't bullying them anymore. We, none of that was going on. It came down to straight basketball in 2010, and I thought it was a huge difference in the series. Thank Thanks, everyone.